Aloha friends and welcome to an update on Kilauea for today, Friday, August 9th. It's about 2.30 p.m. here Mountain Time, about 10.30 a.m. over there in Hawaii. And since my last update several weeks ago in Kilauea, there's been some pretty interesting changes. There's been an intrusion of magma that I think we caught the beginning of in my last update that uh, went on for several days. And there's been some interesting data with the seismicity, ground deformation, and some other things going on there that shows that magma is definitely on the move, um, both maybe a little bit under the summit caldera, but also along the flank of Kilauea, especially in the east rift zone. So let's just take you right in here. Here's the Kilauea summit region, the caldera up at the top of this big volcano. Uh, and then what we've been seeing the last few weeks is intrusions of magma reflected in earthquakes and ground deformation in this area here the upper east rift zone but since that time we've actually started to see more indications uh, that there's been some movement into the middle east rift zone into this area here now let me reiterate that we don't have any evidence that the any magma has moved from the middle east rift zone even as far as Pu'u'o'o this major vent um, that for Kilauea in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, and definitely not uh, any magma movement down here in the lower East Rift Zone where we have people's homes and residences and where we had all the, the chaos in the 2018 eruption. So there's no evidence that it's moved down to that point, um, but there is some evidence that suggests that magma might be moving a little bit down this way. But let me explain a little bit further as we get along. So we had uh, this intrusion on the 22nd to 25th of July in this area up in here in the Upper East Rift Zone just adjacent to the summit caldera. And let's just go right to the USGS update which provides a little bit more information about it. So not an eruption happening right now but we have continuing uh, ground deformation and other interesting data that's been happening since this July 22nd to 25th intrusion. So during that time we had a lot of earthquakes, over 1700 earthquakes, changes in ground deformation uh, that all indicated that magma was leaving the summit region where we saw deflation and we saw inflation occurring here in the Upper East Rift Zone. Uh, we did see during that time some earthquakes in the Upper Middle East Rift Zone um, but then that started to pick up a little bit over time. And so since then, uh, we've started to see more extension and uplift in the Middle East Rift Zone. And we've seen, uh, you know, they give they quantified a little bit here. So it's extended across this region about five inches. Um, I think that's mostly north-south extension. And the uplift has been on the order of about three inches, about seven centimeters since July 23rd. And the tilt meters are, and some of the GPS ground deformation data shows some of that quite nicely uh, with some strong signals that I'll get to here in a second. So interpretation part of this from the USGS. Um, Ground deformation suggests that a magma pathway between the upper east rift zone and the upper middle east rift zone has been reestablished and magma is being supplied to a storage region near Makaoa Puhi Crater. Um, and that area, just to give you a little bit of reference here, here's, a, here's a, the middle east rift zone, here's Pu'u'u'u, the site of so many of those eruptions, um, Mauna Ulu, which is kind of the, the Eastern, Western, Eastern, excuse me, most extent of the inflation and deformation we had a few weeks ago. You can see that here. Uh, and now we're starting to see a little bit more of that, um, the inflation and some of these other signals happening in this region here. Here's Makao Puihi crater right here. Uh, let's go on with the, the update. Um, yeah, this new magma is likely sourced from the recent intrusion, but could also have a component from the summit as well. So it's hard to say exactly if that's coming from that recent July 22nd to 25th intrusion or if there's a little bit leaking in from the summit. In either case, a round of ground deformation indicates the rate of magma supply has decreased over the past two weeks and continues to decrease. Uh, so it's not being fed a lot of magma from deep, but it's sort of shifting and moving um, a little bit. And I think I'll be able to show you here in a second that that magma may just be following some of the fractures and pathways that are already established there and basically maybe sinking a little bit due to gravity. Um, Future episodes of unrest could lead to intrusions and, and eruptions. These recent changes indicate that magma is repressurizing Kilauea's summit storage region while also refilling a long-lived storage region near Makaoa Puihi crater in the Middle East Rift Zone. Pulses of magma storage have previously been recorded here as have eruptions. So you can see that here. Um, 
And we've had eruptions here in the past, Mount Ulu, of course, and some other eruptions in this region. So this region is um, known for having eruptions in the past. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, um, and then they kind of lay out what we might expect. There might be no eruption. There could be an intrusion eruption in the Upper East Rift Zone. It's possible something could happen up near the summit, um, but we'd expect to see more earthquakes and some ground deformation moving back in that direction. And low chance, but but possible, that that magma could continue to move down the East Rift Zone. But again, we're not seeing any of that, that um, evidence right now, and we would expect to see earthquakes and ground deformation kind of track down the east rift zone if that were to take place. So again here's uh, the reference map and I'll make sure these are all in the video descriptions if you want to take a look at those. Um, let's look at the earthquake data first over the last bit and this is going to show you so here's the Kilauea summit region here is this is zoomed in as far as I can take it so hopefully that's good enough. Here's the upper east rift zone right in here um, heading out to Puo'o. So this is the area we're going to focus on. Oh, here's Puo'o over here, excuse me. So this is this Middle East Rift Zone we're going to focus on right here. This is Mount Ulu, um, which is, I guess would mark more or less the transition between this Upper East Rift Zone and the Middle East Rift Zone. So what we can do first is add the earthquakes over the last, let's say, 10 days or so. Uh, and so you can see the distribution of earthquakes. A lot of these related to that intrusion here, but then you can also see a good number of earthquakes coming down into this Middle East Rift Zone and then you know none of them going further than Nepal Crater and definitely none out here uh, up to and past Pu'u'o'o. So you can see some of these earthquakes here. Uh, maybe easier to see it if I switch back to just kind of the map view. That might be a little easier to see those. So all those purple dots are earthquakes from the 30th of July up to today. Uh, the other thing we can do here that's kind of fun is uh, well let's go to the google earth view of these and animate these these might make it a little bit more apparent so let's look at this region here caldera is up at the top left corner upper east rift zone mount ulu pretty much in the center of your screen uh, and then pu'u'o'o over here on the far right of your screen so if we let these earthquakes kind of run over time we can see and this goes a week ago. so this uh, data let me go back is uh, for a week so this starts at about August 2nd about a week ago and then goes up to today so you can see these upper east rift zone earthquakes some of them are, are good size you know there was a 3.8 up here uh, but then you can see some more of these starting to pop up still up here mainly in the upper east rift zone but a few more of these starting to pop up as time goes by in the middle east rift zone we're getting more of these quakes 2.2 another 2.2 uh, another 2.2 um, so nothing huge nothing large but more activity in this part of the east rift zone than what we had seen previously so let me show you that again or in a different way with this so we'll go ahead and animate those earthquakes uh, and this one's going to go back to the july 30th so we might see a few more here so upper east rift zone but a few in the middle east rift zone intrusion happening or this is post intrusion i guess but some of that settling and earthquake activity here and then again more of these earthquakes coming in to the Middle East Rift Zone uh, and then let's see and then the animation is done right there so there's the diversity of earthquakes here's what I think is interesting though is if we go to the 3D view and actually look at where these earthquakes are happening so looking sort of uh, below the ground so here is um, the upper East Rift Zone earthquakes here. And you can see there mainly, if we get this, let me see if I can get this oriented just right here for you. There we go, um, right about like that. You can see they're mostly close to the surface, um, maybe defining a little bit of the dike that was that formed there. But notice as we go from this upper East Rift Zone to the east into the Middle East Rift Zone, notice the quakes get deeper and they're almost like they're just moving down a ramp in general right there's some going up and down they're, they're at all you know several different levels but in general we can see these this is a deeper batch of earthquakes than we saw up here and so what might be happening and, and one interpretation that's out there um, and that I think makes sense to me is that this magma was injected from a summit region into the upper east rift zone in on july 22nd to 25th and then since that time some of that magma has maybe migrated down through uh, pathway system in the uh, in the rift zone into this region here. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of earthquakes here though, because if we if we were bringing in fresh magma 
uh, pressurized magma, if you will, that would be breaking a lot of rocks and we should see a lot more earthquakes here. Instead, we just see a few. So it might, the low seismicity here, um, and when we combine this with the ground deformation, the uplift that we've been seeing here suggests maybe th this magma is just kind of settling in to this region here, kind of just, just sliding down due to gravity. And, and, and rather than being, you know, more magma being pushed into the system, at least at this time. Um, here's some of the tilt over the past month. So this shows the past month or so's data, uh, inflation going on. And then you can see that drop there uh, away from the summit. Excuse me, this is the summit area here. So inflation at the summit, but then as the magma left the summit region and moved into the upper east rift zone, you can see it drop here. And then since that time, it's been moving back up. So if there is more magma coming into the system, it seems to be happening closer to the summit. Uh, and then from there, it finds pathways into the upper east rift zone. Uh, this I've shown before, but just to kind of give you a quick uh, review, of where those earthquakes were from the 22nd to 25th, kind of in this region here uh, from Mount Ulu uh, up towards the caldera. This was the region in the Upper East Rift Zone where we saw the earthquakes. That's what the little circles are. And then the fun little rainbow colors here. There's the, the central point of uplift there. And that's probably better shown. Oh, real quick, I, there was also some cracks in the chain of craters road after those in, that, that intrusion. So that intrusion and that ground deformation was actually manifested as something visible and observable um, at the surface. So USGS employees were able to actually see um, along the chain of craters road. Let's see, they don't say like how much it might have moved or anything, but they were actually able to uh, observe and probably made measurements of some of these cracks in the road there that I'm sure they're monitoring along with all the other data. Uh, here is what things look like back on the end of July. So this was in my last update. So there's the area um, near Mount Ulu where the uplift was occurring. Here's Mount Ulu right there. But now when we look at the INSAR data of ground deformation for August 7th, here's Mount Ulu. Here's where we had the inflation occurring now. Notice it's shifted further to the east. So now it's uh, just west of Puuo'o in this region here. So we've seen the, the location or the locus of inflation changing from the lower part of the e upper east rift zone into the middle east rift zone right here so um, more data there that suggests that that's kind of tracking in that direction there uh, and then finally looking at some of the other ground deformation data if we go to uh, a tilt meter let's go over here to this is Pu'uo'o and we look at a tilt meter which basically think of it like a carpenter's level but it's so um, sensitive it can measure very small changes in tilt uh, not not at the degree level even smaller than that like at the radian level so notice here the green line is probably the best one to look at here things are pretty stable in July uh, but then over the last couple of days as some of that magma maybe has moved down into the Middle East drift zone closer to Pu'uo'o um, but not quite there we've seen a little kick here a little bit of uplift in the tilt meter again not much movement on that tilt meter and then just over the last day or two a little bit more significant component there um, again we don't i don't think it's magma necessarily being injected underneath that middle east drift zone i think it's actually moving down from that intrusion that was um, in the upper east drift zone and then finally uh what was i going to do here oh show you some of the gps data so if we go to, here's again, Mount Ulu, Pu'uo'o over here. So we're in the Middle East Rift Zone. We go to one of the, the GPS stations. So remember, we've got three graphs associated with these GPS stations. Top one here, the way the USGS organizes them, this shows east-west movement. So if it moves up, it's moving to the east, down is to the west. With the middle graph, this is north-south movement. So up is to the north, down is to the south. And then the last graph shows vertical movement up or down. And notice here, we'll just start with this one. As we come into uh, the last few weeks here in July and August, just a dramatic kick. Dramatic kick. There was a sta uh, steady deflation going on out here in the, in the Middle East Rift Zone. And then that's suddenly spiked upwards a bit over the last week or two. Uh, you see that also with the other components of motion as well. A little bit of a kick to the east 
and a kick to the south along with this uplift. And you can see that at other stations too. If you pick, um, you know, here's a different station, Miramano Ulu. Um, you see a similar sort of trend here, although here's a little bit of a down drop, which is interesting, um, but some a different type of movement in the data. Um, if we move further down the rift zone, yeah, here's a similar thing here. Um, uplift, movement to the uh, north in this case, and then movement to the west in that case, depending on which side of like the rift you're on. So uh, pretty interesting stuff. So Killaway is always one that we kind of keep tabs on and keep track of. It'll be interesting to see over the next week or two where the earthquakes and ground deformation data goes. Does it stay here um, at the same rate it's it's been deforming in terms of ground deformation? Do we pick up more earthquakes? Um, is there more magma that's going to move from the summit area down into the Upper East Rift Zone and possibly Middle East Rift Zone? These are all good questions that we'll have to look at moving forward. So uh, we'll keep tabs on these and just keep you informed as best we can. So thanks again for your time and support of the channel and hope you enjoyed this. Take care.